Hi everyone. In JavaScript, you can't really create an animation without using an animation loop, and you can't create an animation loop without using probably the greatest functions ever created in all of history, the request animation frame function. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to use the request animation frame function to create an animation loop and how the animation loop in turn can be used to create a pretty awesome animation. So let's get started. So first of all, let's talk about what an animation is. At, a most, at its most basic level, an animation is nothing more than a start state and an end state, and then the visualization of how you get there from the beginning to the end. So in this case, we have a circle that is starting off really small, and it's on the left side of the screen. And over a period of time, that same circle shifts over, becomes much bigger, and is in its final state, which is a larger version that is on the right side of where it started from. And how it gets there, the property values that were changed as a, peer, as a part of making this animation, is really what you end up seeing and what you really consider the animation that you often talk about. So in JavaScript, what is responsible for creating that animation, creating these interpolated states, as I like to call it, is an animation loop, an animation loop. And an animation loop is pretty simple. It is just a function, a block of code, that gets called over and over and over again as just part of drawing things to the screen. So in this case, we have this animate circle function. And this function does just two things. On a circle object, I'm increasing the x property by 1 and a size property by 1. If this function would be called just once, you would really not really notice anything. Now, this circle moving one pixel to the right and one pixel in size overall isn't really going to be visible. But you can imagine as this function gets called over and over again over a period of time, you can slowly start to see how the values for x and size as they get larger can start to mimic the path that you see here, the path that the circle takes to get to its final state. So the key, though, is calling this function repeatedly. And I commented out saying call loop again, and I didn't really talk about how that is going to be done. And as you can imagine, the way you do that is by using what is known as a request animation frame function. This function, how it works, is pretty simple. On your window object, you have the request animation frame, and it takes a callback, which is the name of a function that's going to call as part of creating the loop. And since the animate circle is the loop that we want to call, I pass the same function name in into a request animation frame function. Now, on the surface, this kind of looks a little wonky, right? It looks a little weird because you know, you're calling a function from within a function, which for your typical use case will result in your UI freezing, will result in the app just you know, seeming like it you know, froze your browser. But fortunately, the request animation frame is a little bit, the function is a little bit more intelligent than that. And it does a lot of work to ensure that you call this function at a, at a reasonable rate and that the rest of your application is still very responsive, something you will, you will see very shortly as part of actually using this function as part of a, a, a demo. So the last thing to go before, before we get to the demo part is the request animation frame function can be used kind of like this. You know, if you only care about the, the most recent versions of all the browsers on the desktop and on a mobile device, you can use window request animation frame pretty much straight up without any consideration for older browsers. But because you know, it's still a reasonably new thing and a lot of people are running older versions of Chrome, Firefox, Safari, IE, and all of that, I generally recommend you do this. You know, create a variable called request animation frame and then just go down the list and ensure that one of the vendor specific implementations of request animation frame kicks in, the default one isn't available. This doesn't change your use case a whole lot. Instead of calling window the request animation frame, you just call request animation frame and the signature is the same. The, you basically call the animate circle function, the callback for your animation loop, just the way you did in the previous line. So I highly recommend you do this just as a, a nice way of having more people have access to the awesomeness that is request animation frame. So, all right. So now that we've just seen a very basic overview of how this function works, let's actually apply it to a real example. So here I have my favorite thing in the world, a blue circle, was well, actually a donut. So it's you know a little bit lower in its hierarchy in my favorite list of things, but it's still a circle and it's moving from left to right. And what we're gonna do is basically recreate this and just talk a little bit about how the animation loop played in and how request animation frame helped you create what you're seeing right now. So let's get started. So I'm gonna switch over to my code editor of choice, Visual Studio. You can use any editor you want, of course. Notepad is also perfectly fine. 
And all I'm going to do is just add some, you already see some boilerplate content here. If I run the app as it is right now, all you see is just a blue circle, a blue, I mean, a blue donut on a yellow background. And nothing's really happening. Nothing is moving. That's because this image element that is what you're actually animating, it's just an image. It's not a GIF. It's not you know anything special. So what I'm going to do is actually add the lines of code that gives you the ability to have this thing slide from left to right. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a variable called the thing to reference our element that is currently in markup. And I'm going to use the query selector function and pass in the selector for thing. And that's it. And next, I'm going to go ahead and add all the code for the request animation frame declaration. So I'm just going to copy this and just paste it in here. And let me get the tabbing just right. So this is exactly what we saw in the slide earlier. I'm calling, I'm creating a variable called request animation frame, and I'm just using the window request animation frame object uh, function as going down the list until one value becomes true, a value to true, which is bound to be pretty high on most reasonably recent browsers. So next up, I'm going to define my animation loop. Let's call this one function move thing. And I'm being very creative here with my naming. And let me make sure this function gets called move thing as well. And let's go ahead and specify the request animation frame right now. Request animation frame move thing. Great. So right, if this function were to run right now, if I run my application, Nothing's going to happen. The move thing function will get called, but it's not going to do anything interesting because I haven't actually specified what exactly this animation loop is going to do. So let me first create a variable called current position, and this will help. You know, essentially it's a counter, and I'm going to increment this counter by five every time this function gets called. And next up, we have the thing. So I'm going to set its left property, style.left. To be current position plus pixels because the you know inline styles in CSS some of them do care about the the unit that you're using as a way of measuring the value and we'll just stop right here let's just see what it looks like right now the app is loaded and you can see that the if I refresh the circle just moves from left to right it doesn't come back so let's go and fix that it's a very simple change I'm going to copy and paste that in all I'm doing is checking for the value of the current position variable. And if it's greater than 900, which is the arbitrary width that I specified as the point I want to circle, to basically go back to its initial position. So if I were to hit and preview this one right now, you'll see the circle moves to the right and it loops and it loops. Perfect, exactly the way we wanted it. So one thing to call it before I move on to the rest of this, of this, of this video is you don't want to do this. You know, for simplicity, I've, I said style.left and I'm animating the, the left position, but you really want to be setting the translate function, the translate transform function, or even better, translate 3D. And I write about that pretty extensively on crib.com and why you should do that. So, you know, for convenience, do this, but for real situations, especially when you're doing things that's more performance intensive, but definitely never ever use style at left, use translate or translate 3D. All right, so let's get back to our slides. So the thing is, what makes this function so awesome? Like, you know, why am I just, you know, probably a big fan of it and I would stand in line for hours if I knew it was gonna be speaking in some part of town somewhere. So first of all, the request animation frame function is synchronized with when your browser is about to repaint. So many times when you're creating a loop, you never quite know what your browser is doing. It could be in the middle of some computationally intensive task. It could be in the middle of restoring some UI that was brought in from some other you know, piece of script. You, you often have code that is running that is almost wasteful. Request animation frame, though, avoids that. It's because it is in constant communication with the right moment to call your animation loop function. You, get, you don't waste a lot of time. You don't waste a lot of effort. You draw things only when it needs to be drawn without having essentially unnecessary work being done. And related to that is that it's optimized for animation. In a request animation frame, the word animation is a part of its name and it is partly there because its only purpose is to help you create animation loops, it's help you create and work well in animation scenarios. And part of it is that it runs, it calls itself 
almost 60 times a second. You know, commonly most of our displays now refresh at 60 times a second. And unless you're doing something really computationally intensive inside your animation loop, you're going to be getting close to 60 frames a second almost consistently, which you really can't say for any other ways of creating animation loops. And so the other best things about it is that because it is in very close communication with the browser, with the rest of your system, it can speed up, slow down, or pause entirely depending on what exactly you're doing. So for example, if you have an animation loop and you change tabs, you switch focus away from your browser to another tab or another application altogether, the animation will just stop. It'll basically not be wasting CPU cycles, not be wasting resources, you know, which is very close to number four, which is respecting your battery life. You know, it's very important on a handheld device where you don't want your animation to just be draining all the limited resources, which is battery that you have. Not so important on a desktop or a gigantic laptop, but definitely something to keep in mind and something that's definitely more important, especially when you have, most of us have smartphones. And best part, number five, it is support on all modern desktop and mobile browsers. And with the small fallback I introduced in the previous few slides, you are able to probably get more than 70, 80% of all people to use request animation frame. 20% cannot, but there's a good chance if you're gonna be creating something really cool, they probably will be able to see more of it anyway. So last thing is this. Commonly, you know, especially if you've been doing stuff on HTML and JavaScript for a long time, you probably created an animation loop using set interval and set timeout. Well, I'm gonna tell you guys, hate to break the news, but just don't use it. Because set interval and set timeout, are, they're fantastic for what they do which is calling a block of code you know, in fixed intervals, but they're not great for animations. So use it for everything else, but for animations though, use request animation frame. The close integration with the browser, the close optimization it has with various device manufacturers, especially in the handheld world, just makes it a far better choice for creating really smooth animations without the stuttering, without the unnecessary work, without, the, without the, some of the drawbacks that set interval and set timeout have when creating animations. So with that, if you want to learn more about request animation frame, which I write about very extensively in a lot of articles on crew.com, just search for it, go to crew.com and search for it. If you have any questions, post in the forums. And you can also you know, find me on Twitter, Krupa, and Facebook and YouTube. And last but not least, if you like animations, if you like learning more things, kind of like what I just showed you right now, I wrote a book all about animation in HTML CSS and JavaScript. It's you can find on Amazon in paperback and Kindle editions. So don't wait, get it. I would highly appreciate it. All right. Talk to you guys later.